so many memories, so many characters that, that, that are around the club, not just within the dressing room at that time, when I was part of the club, just around the dressing room, you know, <coughs> around the football club, character after character. And, and again, that's the heartbeat of the club. That's what, that's what makes any club. And I just feel as though at Everton, Everton have had it right for such a long time around the football team, not necessarily the team itself. The, the people around the club have, have, always, have always been perfect. And that's what I think makes Everton. And it's great that you, you are here tonight alongside Lee Carsley. He's was, was a good friend of yours, someone you're quite close to. Yeah, Lee's my best mate. Lee, Lee's, um, you know, we, we, we've known each other before. We both signed for, for Everton uh, w with playing for Ireland together. But we are, we are best mates. We're very, very close. We'll speak to each other almost, if not every day. So whether it'll be the odd text where he'll abuse me or whatever it'll be, or it'll be the phone call, we, yeah, we speak to each other regularly. And that's been the case for 10, 15 years. He's my best mate. So... Yeah, he'll, he'll probably give you a bit, a bit of, or tell you a few things about me, give me a bit of stick, but yeah, I love him to death, yeah. Of course, you've, you've just flown back from America the last week or so. Tell us what you was doing over there in New York. Yeah, I was over running the New York Marathon uh, last Sunday. Uh, that was tough, tough going it was, um, especially when you have a, a slight injury along, along the route. But yeah, I was running the, for the Down Syndrome Association. Um, I've, I've worked with the Down Syndrome Association since my eldest daughter Elsie was born when I was part of Everton at that time. Um, again, that's maybe something why I've got such a strong bond with the club as well, for, for how the club came together after Elsie was born. It was a huge shock to me and to my family at that particular time. But the club came together around me, again, teammates who I would class as friends now because of how they came around me and how they supported me through a difficult time. But not just my teammates, as I said before, it was the people around the club, everybody. And that's why I've got. That's why I've got so much respect for this place, and that's why I'll, I'll always, you know, I'll always come back with a smile on my face because, because of what happened during those time. But yeah, I ran the New York Marathon for, for the Down Syndrome Association, so managed to raise a few quid. So that was the most important thing, and uh, yeah, it was pleasing just to get round uh, last Sunday. How how much money did you raise? What what time did you do the marathon in? I did it in four four hours thirteen. So I I was actually very disappointed with that. I really was disappointed. I was expected to run about uh, certainly under under three thirty, three three fifteen. I don't know three fourteen marathon um, a couple of years ago. So I was expected to go something around that, but I did pull my calf halfway around. So that wasn't great. Again, the legs probably going on me. The muscles are not as strong as they probably once were. So uh, yeah, the time wasn't the best. Uh, as for total, I think it's around about six thousand now. And um, I actually another thing, I didn't promote it enough. I didn't, I didn't promote it like I probably should have done. Um, the, the Down Syndrome Association were on to me. They were saying to me, "Look, can you just give it a few plugs? Give it." And and you always feel as though you're kind of leaning on people. You're always putting people under too much pressure when you start to promote it a bit too much. But the last week, I sent a few texts to a few lads and a few people who I know who I knew started to promote it a little bit more on Twitter. And all of a sudden the total went up tenfold. So I think it's around about 5,000 now and, and there is still more coming in as well. So around about 5,000 pounds. So I've got to be happy with that, yeah. From what you've seen of Everton so far this season, with your, your, your pundit's hat on now, yeah. what changes have you noticed from the way we played last season to the way we play now since well, Ronald Koeman's coming? I think, first of all, it's quite glaring. I think every Everton will say that much better defensively. I, mean, I say that with the Chelsea defeat a few weeks ago, but take that aside, Everton have been much better defensively and... There was certainly a turn in Romelu Lukaku's form, I think, uh, whatever's been said to him, what, a month, six weeks ago, to get him back firing again as well. I think that was very important for Everton because getting him back going again, I think it gives a lift to the whole side and that, that's, that was hugely important. So you've got to maybe perhaps credit, obviously Romelu Lukaku himself, but credit the manager for getting in his ear, getting him back on side because there's certainly been a, a, a change within him, I, th I felt as well, watching them. Um, and I think in general... You look into all. I, I'm always looking to the Irish boys. I'm always looking at Seamus Coleman. I think he's getting better and better. He's put. He's got the armband now for Ireland and become captain. I think he's excelling. I think he's getting better and better every season. James McCarthy is another I would watch. Darren Gibson, Ed McGeady, although he's he's gone on loan to Preston, who I would obviously keep an eye on f for them as well. Who's actually playing quite well. So you look to the Irish boys. But aside of that, I think. I think Everton have got a strong side. I think Balassi is a very good signing. I'm looking to him this season now to provide assists and, and of course, get his, his own fair share goal, of goals himself. Defensively, I think Icy Williams, I think he's been a, an excellent signing. I think alongside Jagielka, whoever it's going to be this season, I think Everton have got 
the nucleus of experience with Leighton Baines, of course, still around, Jagielka, Williams' experience, Seamus Coleman, who's now maturing even more with the, with the more inexperienced players, to try to help the likes of Ross Barkley. I'm looking for him as well to try to kick on over the next year or two and fulfil his potential. So there's a lot of positives. There, there really are a lot of positives. And I, and I do feel that even listening to Ronald Koeman talking, I think the club's probably short of maybe two or three players. And I think that will be addressed in, in this next coming window in January and beyond that. So I think the issues that, that are there that will need to be addressed will be addressed. And I think going forward, Everton are in a strong position. And finally, Kev, obviously you're here tonight in the company of Ronald Koeman. Have you had a chance to chat to him? Have you have you, your paths crossed at all in, over the last few years? No, they haven't at all. I, I mean, I cracked one down there, but I, I grew up supporting Ireland, probably as everyone would know that. Uh, so I seen him score against England in, what was it, 92, something like 93, something like that, whatever it was, towards the end of Graham Taylor's reign. I think it actually cost Graham Taylor his job as England manager. And everyone in our house, we were, off the, we were off the city that night, we were off the couch supporting Holland. So as bad as that sounds, that, that's how it was maybe in my house growing up. So we all know, we all know. I, in my head, first of all, I think of Ronald Koeman, the player. I think of him scoring the European Cup final for Barcelona at Wembley. I, I see him scoring goals. Um, so many free kicks for Holland, being, being such a, a linchpin for Holland as well during those top sides that they had, Barcelona. So he was a, a top class footballer and I think his transition to management has been, I wouldn't say it's been seamless because he's probably had a few ups and downs as well, but you look at him at Benfica, you look at him at Altmar, you look at him at you know the various clubs he's been at, then you look at him at Southampton going in there, you look at the job that he's done at Southampton. It's, it's a great step for him now to come into Everton. I think, I think he's the manager that if, you, if, if I'm looking at Everton now and I'm looking at a side that want to go on now to that next level and start challenging the top four, start challenging for trophies, he's the ideal manager. To be honest with you, I just don't think, I don't think he, he talks rubbish. I don't think he does. I think, he's, I think he's straight talking. I think he says it as it is. As a player, that's exactly what I would want from would him. Would you appreciate that as a player? The yeah, fact you, totally appreciate it. The manager it. says it is, straight to the point. If I'm not playing well, I want him to tell me I'm not playing well. I want him to tell me how I can improve. I don't want him to beat about the bush. I don't want him to skirt around the edges and, and tell me tell me things that weren't necessarily true. With Ronald Koeman, I'd feel as though, as a player, some players might not like that, don't, don't take me wrong, but I think some play, most players should listen to what he's saying to them. He's been there, he's done it as a player. He's been there now and he's doing it as a manager. So if he's telling you that something isn't quite right, you've got to take it on board and you've got to try and then adjust. You've got to try and get better because of that. So he's the ideal man, I think. I think, I think if any, ever a manager was going to fit a football club, as in Ronald Koeman coming into Everton, I think it's the perfect fit because I think he's no nonsense. And that's what I think Evertonians have always been about.